a few seconds and get this party started. Anybody want to tell a joke? I do this to my students all the time. No? No. All right. You got one? Oh. Normally I do, but maybe not appropriate for here. Um, at the bar when it's over. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to a bar after this? We should. We should. Okay, great. You all are invited. Thanks. All right. You ready to do this? Haley's in the room, so I think that means it's time for me to go. Um, welcome, everybody. You are right on time, don't worry. I know we, we get a little nervous. Um, being late in LA is totally acceptable to say we're stuck in traffic. Right, everybody be like, oh my God. It's very true. Thank you for being here. I have no idea how the hell I got the job of moderating this panel. I have done a very good job of pretending to have my shit together. But I assure you, the women next to me are the real deal. Um, if you are trying to level up your brand, you are in the right space. Um, so I'll start off with introducing myself. This works. Uh, and then introduce our panelists. And this will be super informal. We'll learn a lot about skincare, we'll learn about fashion, um, and things will be good. But before we kick off, I do want to say that this is a safe space um, and also a brave space. So um, anything you say here, no such thing as a stupid question. Uh, anytime there is expertise, like let's use it. I'm sure I can't afford their hourly afford their hourly rate, so I'm gonna ask some questions myself <laughs> about these dark spots um, <laughs> on my face. Um, but yeah, seriously. And if you're more introverted and not uh, typically in the conversation and want to ask a question, I ask that you be brave uh, and step up. And if you talk too much like me. Step back a little bit. <laughs> so, with that, uh, we have some amazing women with us here, and I'm going to start uh, with Jenny uh, to my, my far left. Uh, and Jenny is a stylist, as you can tell by this wonderful chic leather number she is wearing uh, today. She's first generation Mexican um, and has been in the fashion industry for about a decade, where she has done everything from uh, being an assistant to working for the wardrobe team on E. So again, uh, she's the real deal. My good friend Nye um, is here with us as an award-winning <laughs> esthetician, entrepreneur in skincare, and shout out to her fiance who's also here today. Um, <laughs> we need uh, support uh, when we are badass boss women. Um, and she's been doing this for a long time and has a plethora of online platforms where she's able to utilize uh, and show us tips on, on skincare. And so why the hell do we want to talk fashion and skincare uh, and leveling, leveling up. And the reality is, is that if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you play good. And if you play good, they pay good. And as we just learned, <laughs> right now we are only making 78 cents uh, to the dollar of our male uh, counterparts. So if, if you could uh, give me, uh, oblige me rather, and give them a round of applause before we kick off. And, and Jenny, if you could just talk to us about your business and then we'll move to Nye and we'll go from there. I'm a freelance stylist now. I work with individuals from personal shopping to uh, red carpet to shows. It just depends on what project comes my way. Um, and I have been freelance now for like two years. Like after the pandemic happened, I was working for Entertainment Tonight. I was the lead stylist there. And then they released me because they didn't have any budget. So then I was like, all right, well, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna give up. Like I've been working so hard. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna lean into this. And I decided a freelance business. So I've been doing that now for like almost three years. Tell me what it means to be a freelance stylist. I don't know about y'all, but I'm asked lots of clarifying questions. <laughs> so freelance stylist is basically you're on your own. You have to get your own jobs, your own clients. Either you sign with an agency and they can help you get jobs, but it's all word of mouth. So it's all about networking and building your connections. So then if someone thinks of you for a position, they're like, oh, Jenny can do this, you know? So it's like, once you build your clientele, it's like, how do I keep them, you know? 
So that's kind of where I'm at now. And what services um, are, are you offering your clients? Uh, like I said, personal shopping, okay. if I, they need ideas in their, like how do I work with what I have in my world, wardrobe? Like I don't have that big of a budget. So I go into their homes and then I look at their closet and then I just curate outfits for them. And they're like, dang, I didn't know I had this in my closet. So it's just teaching them how to work with what they have. Awesome, thank yeah. you. Nye. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, I, my name is Nye, Naomi Robert Smith. Um, I'm a licensed esthetician. I'm licensed here in California and also in New York, um, where I'm from, from upstate New York. I'm also first generation, first generation American. My family is from Jamaica. Um, I have been an esthetician for um, uh, six and a half years. Sorry, I hesitate because I still like almost want to say like two or three because it's weird. <laughs> I'm actually feeling like, you know, I'm like very well established now. But yeah, so six, uh, seven, six and a half years I've been an esthetician. I've lived in California for about the same amount of time. Oh, I guess. I've been an esthetician for seven and a half years. I've lived in California for six and a half years. Um, I um, uh, started out as a nail tech, so um, I used to do nails. Um, in upstate New York, I used to work in a lot of spas. I've worked in um, small, um, like local hair salons. From there, I moved to um, California. I started doing waxing, so um, I'm also an expert in full body waxing, especially for people of color um, with different like um, hair types and hair textures um, and different like skin concerns. Um, I mo mainly focus on um, women of color because it is a very, um, uh, it's a very small space and there aren't a lot of experts in skin of color and there are a lot of people of color. So um, I tend to focus in that area. Um, I used to have a, a, a small uh, skincare um, uh, clinic in um, Beverly Hills in Robertson. Um, after the pandemic, we closed because, you know, like was mentioned before, California was shut down for a really long time. Um, and I think we were, uh, it was like five months and we were all closed. Um, not allowed to work and I was just like yeah I can't do this anymore <laughs> I can't just keep waiting so um, I kind of pivoted to um, online so now I'm mostly um, I'm, I'm a speaker I'm an educator um, I uh, educate about skincare on social media I educate about skincare for brands I educate for, about skincare for events um, I've spoken at like Twitter and Google and now UCLA yeah. <laughs> um, um, so yeah that's um, that's me and then I also have a um, uh, a skincare, uh, a apparel brand for, um, it's called Shower Chic. Um, any clothes that you may wear in the shower, in the bathroom, when you're washing your face, washing your hair, washing your body, um, I make clothes for those. So robes, headbands, turbans, um, cleansing cups, um, all of those um, fun stuff. So yeah, I do a lot of different things. <laughs> I'm a skincare expert. Love it. More reasons for me to shop. Now I need shower clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any reason. I will justify that. All right. So this is how it's going to, it's going to work. Um, I have a few questions that I've curated, but please, I, this is about you all. We want you to have the most time. Uh, so think about some questions uh, from our panelists. But like I said earlier, we are back outside. And I don't know about y'all, but my schedule is insane. And so now that we're post pandemic and we're all transitioning back, uh, some of us into the workplace uh, or in-person meetings, if you, you work freelance, why do we prioritize or how can we prioritize this balance of whether it be fashion or skincare in our busy, busy routines? And any of you can kick us off. <laughs> um, I think it's really important. I think, especially now that we're coming back into like the world, right, and being more social, um, I think a lot of us have social anxieties that maybe we didn't have before, or we don't, we haven't like practiced being social, or we haven't practiced being in person. And I think that um, prioritizing things like skin, um, hair, clothes help you be excited about yourself. So you have that extra battery in your back to kind of speak up, you know, like maybe before you didn't necessarily need that extra battery or that extra boost. But I think now, especially you really need to feel excited about yourself and excited about what you have to say and excited about what you look like. Something as small as like, oh, my brows look really good today can like amp you up to be in a space where maybe you would have been uncomfortable before, but you know, you're like, you know what, I'm just going to talk today or I'm just going to say what I have to say or it, it allows you, you know, it's not necessarily that, you know, beautiful brows or beautiful skin makes you more successful 
successful, but what it does to you on the inside gives you the power to be more successful in your fullest self. So I think that is really important now more than ever. I agree. It's like when you put on an outfit and you walk into a room and you feel confident, you're like, I'm going to own this meeting. I'm going to, you know, like it's all about just doing things or putting things together that make you feel good at the end of the day. Because that's how you want to walk into a room. You want to feel confident. Um, I feel good today. <laughs> I think I look good today. Um, it's definitely helping. Uh, let, let's switch gears um, a little bit. Um, speaking of balance, my dentist is calling me. We'll call them back later. Um, let's be real about it. The pandemic, you know, two years. I don't know about y'all, but I did so much Netflix and ordering of takeout that I have a different body. Right, today. And so for those of us who have different bodies that may be a little larger than we were two years ago, what tips do you have that will begin to give us the confidence uh, to get going in our, in our bodies that we have today? I would just say embrace your body. You know, buy clothes that fit you. It doesn't matter what size it is. Just embrace it because it doesn't matter the size, it's how you feel in your clothes. And that's what I tell all my clients. I'm like, it's okay you're still gonna look good. No matter if you were a six, now you're a 10, you still are beautiful. So just embrace your size, put outfits together you feel confident in. It's simple, it's just like, for me, I'm all about the basics, the staples. It's my favorite pair of jeans, my white t-shirt and a blazer. Those are my go-tos and I feel good in them, you know? So it's just about things that make you feel good, pieces that make you feel good. So just embrace it. What about you on the skin skincare side of things? Um, in the skincare side of things, I, I would also say, you know, like, everyone has acne, everyone has pores that they hate, everyone's annoyed by those fine lines by their eyes. Like, it's, you're not special in that way, you know? So you don't, <laughs> you know, like, you're not, you know, it's not just you, you know? Like, no one is staring at that pimple on your forehead, like, oh my God, look at her. They're all like, oh, she has a pimple too. Okay, good, like, mine, I don't feel so bad about mine on my chin, you know? So, um, I think, not giving those things that we're insecure about so much power because we all have them. Definitely. And let's also be real. Like, to me, I hear having a stylist and an esthetician is like for women who are balling, right? Mm -hmm. These are the luxuries. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to ball on a budget, <laughs> which I'm trying to do most days, right? Mm -hmm. right? right? Some of us in the room, you feel me. How, how do we, how do we do that, right? If you know, maybe I can't procure you, Jenny, or I can't procure you, Nye. What are some things that I can do myself that are budget friendly? I would, I mean, Zara has great options. H and M, <laughs> even Amazon Fashion. Like over the pandemic, I was right. like, wow, they have some good stuff here. Right. So it's just you know, buying things that you don't have to break the budget to like look good. So I would just say shop within your budget. Zara, H&M, Forever 21, Amazon Fashion, Pretty Little, there's so many more resources now that I feel like you can still get really good stuff. Okay. Target Loki has yeah. some great right. Yeah, they do, Target does. Yeah. Let me know. Questions, please. I would just like to add to that. I have popped off on Depop and Poshmark and yeah. Macari, oh, like yeah. Crossroads, oh, if you're yeah. local on Washington, yeah. I will get my Aritzia for $30. Yeah. Sometimes it still has the tags on it. I think secondhand is yeah. so yeah. underrated. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, to touch on that, I feel like uh, right now that's even better for the environment. Mm -hmm. It's just to like repurpose clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, Wasteland is also a good option. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, real real. You can yeah. find some good deals. Yeah. Like I saw, I think it was like a Dion Lee. It's like one of my favorite designers. It was like a blazer, and it was like for like a hundred dollars, you know. And I was like, that's not that expensive because it's a staple, and I'm I'm gonna be able to use it all the time. So it's just like looking at the resources, you know, and just like there's so much out there. How do I get pop and skin on the budget? <laughs> I would say, well, I'll plug myself first. I have a lot of Let's do that. I do, I mean, it's not like I really make any money from you watching them. <laughs> um, but um, yes, on YouTube, um, Golden RX, you can find me. Like lots of, I, I covered nearly everything um, on social media. So I think that is also a good option. But I would say really foundationally, um, cleansing and um, protecting your skin are like the first two like very bare bones. Um, if you're very busy, if you don't really 
care about skincare, if you don't um, have a lot of time to invest, I think those two are the really main things. So like a really great cleanser that is going to um, not strip your skin, so like nothing that feels too drying or um, once your skin is, um, you know, cleansed and uh, clean and dry, if you have like a, that tight cracking feeling, that cleanser is likely too um, abrasive, too stripping for you. So you don't want anything that feels like that. Um, you don't want that like squeaky clean feeling. Um, and you always want to cleanse your skin for 60 seconds. That can also help um, uh, reduce a lot of the, um, some like foundational issues that we can have with our skin, um, like uh, texture, little, um, uh, areas of like breakouts here and there just making sure that your skin is really clean is very very helpful um, it also helps promote circulation by that amount of time um, and that brings a lot of like blood flow to your skin and increases like collagen production and things like that um, secondly foundational SPF um, SPF is like compound interest like what doing it <laughs> and then tomorrow you're not really gonna see a big deal like big difference but in 10 years you're gonna be like thank god I, I did that um, you know it really helps with collagen production um, uh, uh, the UV rays it accounts for like 90% of all like skin damage and like degradation of like your skin collagen elastin. Um, it makes your pores look long, larger, like those things like that. So um, SPF is going to be extremely important. And then at nighttime, like wearing a moisturizer, making sure your skin is nice and moisturized and hydrated. And that is just very like bare bones. Um, very basic. Um, I'd say like level two would probably be making sure your skin is really hydrated. So using like a hydration serum, antioxidant serum, um, or a toner or something like that. Something that's like really like nourishing. And then also exfoliating, maybe like once or twice a week. But again, I'd say start really foundationally. Make sure your cleanser is great. You have a, a, mo a SPF that you really love, somewhere between um, 30 and 50 SPF. Um, you moisturize your skin at night, and then from there you can kind of like see where your skin is at and see what you can need past that. And, and do I see a few questions? I'm coming right to you. Just a quick follow-up question uh, in terms of products. I know we talked about some brands with you. Do you have some products that you recommend that you know are provide affordability? Yeah. Uh, for these? Um, if I were to say um, one brand that is great with affordability and pretty much has every single type of skincare that you would need is Paula's Choice. Paula's Choice literally has every single type of thing that exists. I mean, we almost have too many products, but they you can absolutely find something for your skin type uh, and that is uh, budget friendly on Paula's Choice. I can't I can't I don't think anything on Paula's Choice is over like $35 or something like that. So, um, I think that is a great option. Um, yeah, that would be my go-to without knowing anyone's like skin type or like particular issue. They have such a broad range that you can absolutely find something that would be good awesome. for you. Awesome, Paula's Choice. I see, hi Michelle. Hi. Talk to me. Question, I have a question for both. <clears throat> for the women of a particular age. <laughs> Let me get right to it. <laughs> for, for me, I know, um, as you know, when we get to certain age, or we slow down some. For the men, women with mid, mid levels, mid issues here, what do you suggest are the better patterns? Because I notice that mm. if you wear some colors, it tends to show more of the bulge. If you should wear some patterns, some people say belt, some say belt, what do you recommend is the best way to camouflage this mid area? Uh, you, you know what, I am uh, I work with a lot of women that have had babies mm -hmm. and are older. And I always just like, on the bottom, always just do a solid, and then the top can be either like rouging because it covers up that, you know, that spot, or just the pa wear the pa the pattern on top, you mm -hmm. know, because it's like if you wear on the bottom, I feel like it'll like emphasize it more, and if you just wear on the top, you really can't see it, and also two underpinnings, believe it or not, Under underpinnings, yes, are, yes, they're the biggest. I don't want to plug her, but skins. <laughs> skins oh, skins, I know. Skins. 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 Really I just gave it recently. Yes. I was like, I can't oh, believe no. I'm doing this. Skins. <laughs> Game changer. I feel like that's the one product yeah. you created that works for every body. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Every color. Every color. Yeah. Every color too. It's actually the only one that I can think of that does that. Yeah. 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 Spanx, Spanx, and they didn't have other colors, yeah, like and I'm like, this shades, is not my color. Are, right. Or like women that, like I, you know, women of color I work, they're like, this is not my shade. So I'm grateful that I do have skins that I could offer my clients now. So yes, I would say wear skims that have good body suits too, where you can, they'll like suck everything in, and you'll feel good. I'm literally wearing what are we doing? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
secret. Yeah. It's a book. Exactly. <laughs> For our skincare expert, just really quick, since I am a particular age going through that private summer, um, I purchased <laughs> Power surge. Power surge. Power surge. Yeah. yeah. Power surge. <laughs> Um, what kind of sponge? I know there used yeah. to be a sponge that you can purchase to would absorb the sweat and hold mm -hmm. onto the product. Can you recommend this certain special sponge like that? Um, there used to be a red one years ago, like a sponge. Hmm. I would recommend like blotting papers. Um, oh. Blotting papers are really helpful. You know, just like a little slight touch up um, and. I would also recommend keeping your skin really hydrated. Um, that will help like the makeup kind of like stick to your skin better. Um, when your skin is like a little bit dried out, it the flakiness like, or the like the dry texture on the surface, it makes the makeup stick to it in an uneven way. Mm -hmm. um, versus like when your skin is really hydrated and supple, it just makes your makeup blend a little bit better. So that could be also very helpful as well. Um, but yeah, blotting, um, blotting, I think a lot of brands make blotting. Um, blotting uh, papers, um, but one that I really like is Fenty. Fenty makes great blotting papers. And it's in a cute, yes, Fenty, Fenty Beauty. Um, and it's in a cute little um, little roll-up thing that's also really helpful. And it's black on. Thank Shout out to Rihanna. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, though. Please. So I'm sure probably not you do too. We meet a lot of fabulous ladies here. Where we travel a lot mm -hmm. more. So I can get that fabulous facial. I'm pretty consistent at like 50. I'm getting that facial and Two days I look like hell because I've already been on like four airplane mm -hmm. rides. So how is it like when you're going from like climate to climate? Yeah. Um, I was yeah. like between mm -hmm. Chicago and here, so I'm lying in the extremities. Mm -hmm. So what, what is like any sort of recommendation you have to sort of kind of keep that pep in your skin as you're traveling yes. in different climates and time, and time zones and whatnot? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's very difficult and that's really important because not only are air airplanes are extremely drying. Very, very drying, and they're very like gross and dirty. <laughs> so, um, so it, it does. It dries out your skin a lot. I I always have a pre airplane routine, a pre airplane routine, and a post airplane routine. Um, so pre airplane routine, extremely hydrating. You're gonna cleanse your skin. Um, use like a hydrating toner, um, something like very light, watery, liquidy. Um, a hydrating serum, something a little bit thicker, a little bit like more viscous. A moisturizer, um, again, so like that's like a cream. So we're going in order of um, thinness to thickest and then even like a um, like a balm or an, a facial oil or even like something like a ointment like a CeraVe healing ointment or something like that those three and then you're gonna feel like you have a lot of stuff on your skin but by the time you get to your destination your skin will kind of level out and it will look how it usually does um, because all uh, uh, doing all those layers allow um, moisture to really um, penetrate deeply into the skin and then the, the final heavier layer of like an oil or something like that oil or an ointment um, they tend to repel water so um, the water will stay in your skin and will less be less likely to like be drawn out and evaporate while you're in the airplane or something um, so and then afterward, um, af like you know, when you're cleansing in the evening, you kind of want to do something very similar. Um, cleanse really well because again, the airplane's dirty. You're just touching your face, touching things, um, and then um, doing the same type of like super hydrating um, routine. It tends to help like level out um, the skin or levels out like inflammation that you can get from like traveling different climates. Um, and I tend to while traveling, I think it's really great to keep your your routine extremely hydrating. Uh, I'm sorry, I just had to oh, please. a question. And I mean, obviously, again, we are here probably, half of us are like sleep deprived. And so <laughs> adding to the travel, um, you know, just what can we do for like under the eye to just look a little refreshed mm -hmm. and not so exhausted as we really are? Yeah. Um, so, any, any sort of follow up yeah. to that? Yeah, two things. Um, so, um, I don't, I, I'm not super big on eye creams because I think when you do this, like, um, high, uh, layered level of hydration and moisturizer, it really helps target um, uh, the more thinner um, skin underneath the eye. So I think, um, unless you have an eye cream that you love and love using, um, I think that uh, the prior recommendation is enough. Um, but um, things like um, uh, under eye uh, masks, it just helps keep hydration just in that area. Um, and also just like sheet masks. 
GMAX are generally all the same. They're all just very like hydrating and nourishing. But because they have like a physical sheet that's being like pressed on the skin, it helps reduce the chance of like that water and moisture just straight evaporating from the skin immediately. It kind of just helps seal it in, allows it to penetrate a little bit deeper into the skin cells before you apply a moisturizer. So there's more moisture before it gets evaporated. Um, so I think those two are really important. And concealer also goes a really long way. A great concealer. Um, if your skin tends to be puffy in the morning, I'd also recommend like cold roll rolling um, uh, using like a um, like a metal wand a lot of brands like will sell like little metal wands that just you know um, cool this under eye area it helps kind of promote circulation and like reduce puffiness I got Jennifer here and then I'll, I'll move to you two questions one for each of you for mm -hmm. Jenny yeah. um, do you have any suggestions on how we can travel in the same vein um, and being conscious of what we pack like, mm -hmm. for instance, I try to, like, pack in color schemes mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you have any other suggestions? Um, that's a good idea. But also, too, just, like, getting the staples. Like, if it's, like, one pair of trousers that you love, one pair of leggings, and, like, one jean. Those are all transitional pieces. You can wear them out. You can wear them to a meeting. You can wear them just if you're going to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. So I would just say, like, pack your staples, you know? And, like, I usually do black and white gray like I just that's like my color palette mm -hmm. but it incorporates some color too like you can do blues you can do pinks you can just whatever your color preference is so I would just say like pack the staples and then add onto it okay great yeah. my question for you yes. Nye is around um internal mm -hmm. uh support to help uh help us feel good on the outside. Mm -hmm. So do you have any recommendations on supplements or mm. vitamins that we yeah. should be considering? Yes, okay, so keeping your skin really hydrated is, or keeping your body hydrated is important. Not necessarily that, um, you know, the water that you drink immediately goes to your skin, your organs are gonna use it first, <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, your skin is part of the, your body's like excretory system. So generally if um, your um, uh, excretory <coughs> organs are under less pressure, like liver, um, liver and kidneys, um, your skin will also kind of like be helped and do a better job in that way. It also helps like promote circulation, um, blood and lymph through the face and through the body. Um, that is also very important. Vitamin C is huge. Um, it taking internally, it's a huge, um, it's very popular, like topical, it's like one of the tried and trues, um, but uh, vitamin C internally is also um, amazing for collagen production. Um, uh, Omega-3 fatty acids um, uh, available in um, like deep sea fatty fishes, sardines, um, mackerel, uh, salmon, um, and antioxidants. So um, berries, um, green leafy vegetables, um, antioxidants help um, uh, antioxidants help, uh, what's the word? My mind is going blank. Free radical? Yes, thank you. <laughs> free radical damage. Um, and free radical damage help, will, is like the breaking down of your skin cells. Um, and because, um, collagen and elastin on the surface of the skin can sometimes be the first to go because it's like less vital for your life <laughs> to live, you know, um, that tends to be the first to go. So those three, um, are also really important too. Thank you. Man. Catherine, I'm gonna come back to you. I have, is it Charisse? Yes, Charlize. 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 I can't see. No, you're good. <laughs> Charlize. 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 Yes. So I have the like rose quartz rollers mm -hmm. and the jade rollers and stuff. I've heard mixed uh, reviews about them. Some people say they can carry bacteria and it's actually not good for you. Mm -hmm. Some people say it's good for product pushing. Does it actually help shape your face? Is that good for you? What do you think about that? It helps like move lymph through the face, but mm -hmm. you can also do that with your hands. Um, so it's like the motion of the massage. Um, I don't think they're like a magic wand in any regard, um, but if you like it and it makes you feel good, you can also like put them in the fridge and um, the freezer to like cool them down um, again and help like with puffiness and circulation in the face. So that's helpful as well. Um, but it really depends on like what you and what you like, but no, I wouldn't say that like it's gonna truly help sculpt. Um, like but gua sha yeah, too. I mean, gua sha is helpful. I think gua sha is a little bit more helpful than the rollers. Help me, what's a gua sha? Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> just in case. A gua sha tool. Um, so it is traditional Chinese medicine. Um, mm -hmm. Gua sha, and I guess the um, the idea behind it is um, bringing um, energy to that part of your body. So like in traditional Chinese medicine, they don't just use it for beauty. Like if you have like a headache or like pain in your neck, you know, like you can like rub your neck or rub like different parts of your body, um, bringing like information, bringing um, 
circulation, it kind of like, you know, makes that area red, but bringing that circulation to the area um, and then helping like clearing like the negative energy from that space. Nice. Um, in beauty, um, people tend to use gua sha to help push like lymph and circulation like through the face. Um, it's really important to circulation through the face because um, especially like our under eye area and sometimes like our jowls, if you tend to sleep on your face, you'll collect a lot of um, fluid in your face. So it's really good to help circulate that. Um, that's like a, a lot of the reason why after a facial you have that glow because you've just had someone rubbing your face and like promoting circulation for the last hour. Um, so that is really helpful for like moisture and glow. Um, and if you're going to use a wash, make sure you're using something that has a lot of slip. You can use like a heavy moisturizer or um, an oil to make sure that you're not tugging on the skin and causing any irritation. Man, I've learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine and then we'll move to Carol. Uh, one a question for both of you. So, um, Jen, yes, yeah, Hi. you're you're in this geographic area, but if you're not, and you're in say in the Bay Area, how does somebody find a personal shopper? I had one for a while, and darn it, we moved. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it doesn't fit anymore. But the <laughs> uh, recommendations on that, and I have a question. Um, usually you can find any like personal shoppers even at stores yeah. like Nordstrom, mm -hmm. Neiman Mark, like whatever mm -hmm. your 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 uh, budget is. Like they're they're always there. I know Nordstrom for sure has like a good personal shopping uh, client like uh, support system there that I know because my friend used to be a personal shopper. So you just go to the stores there and see like you know what they're like. But it's usually word of mouth. So. You know, if anyone knows of anyone, that's, I mean, that's how I get jobs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'll send them your way. <laughs> yes. Um, let's just say Peach Buzz. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to get a little, not so much Peach Buzz, mm -hmm. can you tell us some ways, I have different friends tell me about different products that they like, I would like a professional. My professional opinion is professional dermal cleaning. Um, dermal cleaning is amazing. Like it makes your skin, I'm about to gush on dermal cleaning because it's one of my favorite treatments, but it makes your skin so soft. It looks, sometimes when you apply products, the hair on your face actually absorbs some of it too. So without that, um, products can penetrate a little bit deeper. Dermal cleaning is also an exfoliation treatment. Um, so it's also really helpful in that way and like allowing products to penetrate deeper. It is different than using like a um, razor at home because perf um, uh, professionals are using surgical blades. So they're very sharp. <laughs> You cannot do them at home. Um, any esthetician that does do it at home, they'll know that like they actually accidentally nick themselves. So please don't even try. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna channel Dr. B. So yeah. the so let that's a professional. Mm -hmm. And then there's the at home. What what is there anything for the budge at home? You can like shave your face. It's not going to be as helpful or as impactful as dermaplaning, and there are risks involved because if you're doing it, um, you know, if you're not applying like the right tension to the skin, um, you can cause irritation, just like the constant friction. So honestly, I don't really recommend it. Um, you could also wax your face, which would last a little bit longer than dermaplaning because you're not cutting. Oh, it's not, it's not too bad. It's honestly not too bad. <laughs> um, maybe I'm biased because I'm a waxer, um, but. Um, if you find a great um, person to do it um, using like hard wax, the European Wax Center honestly does a pretty good job. Their wax is really good. Um, it's not too bad because the vellus hair on your face isn't doesn't grow like as deep as like the hair on your head, for example. Um, so it doesn't feel awful. But if you have a sensitive, if you're sensitive to pain, then I probably wouldn't recommend it. So basically, Catherine, you're gonna fly back, we'll have dinner, and then she'll wax your face. The last part? Just what, where are we going with pants? <laughs> 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 High, middle, low rise. I personally don't like the mid rise. I'm like, oh, that was like a trend that I that was in style when I was growing up, and I hated it. Mm -hmm. And my mom always used to say, like, don't wear those low rise pants because you're going to have, like, you know, like a muffin little top. muffin top. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm a fan of high top, like high waisted. I feel like it's very flattering. For you, when you get a woman with certain age and has a little bowl in there, I think I, I still think it's flattering yeah. because yeah. it sucks yeah. everything in, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And you could hide it, you put a sweater over, mm -hmm. or like a shirt, like a blouse, or in a blazer. I just still feel like it's the most flattering, and it gives you like a silhouette, mm -hmm. opposed to like a mid-rise or a low-rise. I don't like low 
Yeah. And it also kind of it makes your legs look longer. Yeah, too. it does. Yeah, which I think is helpful. Yeah, for like lengthening like the torso. Yes. Yes. They're just like the best. <laughs> High rise wins. Yes. yes. Yeah. Please. Okay, I'm gonna continue on the women of a certain age. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this trend. So uh, I get quite obsessed one with um, the hairs that are not as soft yes. as um. the. <laughs> Other hairs on your face. Uh -huh. So, I mean, is tweezing that's, you know. You can tweeze them. Um, I also have those hairs. I have PCOS, so um, those hairs are quite prominent. Yeah, yeah. So I have more yeah. hair on my face than my mom, which is. It's like I was obsessed with this one right now. Yeah. So I didn't bring my tweezer with me. Like, yeah. Or should um, you get it when you get home? <laughs> yeah, tweezing, <laughs> tweezing can be helpful. Um, make sure you're doing like clean skin. Um, make sure like your tweezer is really clean. Um, I also find that after you tweeze, it's really helpful to use kind of like acne products in those areas to prevent like possible breakouts. Oh. Um, if you find that you are still breaking out, even though in those areas um, after you tweeze, because um, the hair is attached to like your pore and your follicle. So it's kind of like all the same system. So sometimes when you pull the hair, now that pore is inflamed and that's what's gonna cause your breakout. Um, if you find that that happens, I recommend um, going to a professional waxer because their techniques are going to be a lot more calm to the, calm to the skin. But if you don't find that there's like a particular issue, tweezing is fine. And then the follow-up question is, um, even though I use sunscreen all the time, I'm finding that since I am a woman of a certain age, my skin um, elasticity mm -hmm. is changing. Um, so for the next <laughs> Really good over-the-counter products that actually work, or is that really going to be save your money and do like a latex treatment or something like that? I I tend to I think that retinols are very important and like really powerful in your routine, especially um, as you get older and your um, collagen and elastin you know start to decrease. Um, I find that retinol is very helpful and it is good to just kind of like have as a staple, find a retinol that you really love. Paula Choice is one that is really great. Um, another retinol that I absolutely love is from Shani Darden. It's a little bit pricier, but it's excellent. <laughs> um, uh, that is another one um, that I love. Those two I think are probably my favorite retinol. CeraVe actually also has a very affordable retinol that I really like. They're um, renewing, they have two. I think it's the renewing one. One is light blue it's the light blue one <laughs> but one is light blue and one is purple i think they're both great i think the purple one also has vitamin c as well um so it depends on what your skin likes um but those are like my three options across all price points um that is really i say i would say start there um be really consistent about your skincare routine see how much that makes a difference mm -hmm. and if you're still unhappy i think laser treatments are also um, a great way to go they are very um microneedling is also a great way to like increase the collagen in your skin it's a little bit of investment i think um in, in california and los angeles you know microneedling service is somewhere around like 600 um but the difference that you see in the skin might be worth it. You know, it might be worth, you know, going through, you know, you to get that same difference, you may have to go through maybe like five bottles of retinol, you know, use it for like up to a year. And at that point, it's like, okay, maybe you could have just, you know, kind of cut your losses and got, get there faster. So it really depends on like the type of investment that you want to make. I have time for one more question. Do you have one more question? What do you got for trigger finger? What's trigger finger? So you're not that age yet. <laughs> <laughs> when you get restless finger, your finger gets caught. Yeah. Yeah. Next panel. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, is this going to roll? Here. Um, question for both of you guys. As you're building your own brands and you know our small businesses, how much of social media do you guys have to learn how much do you depend on social media for promoting your brand like i know you said that a lot of your business is word of mouth do you utilize your social media because these days like i was looking for someone to do my hair i've never gotten my hair professionally done and like i go to sam's fantastic sam's they've trimmed me i cry and <laughs> so i found someone on tiktok found out that they're local and yeah. it's so expensive but i'm like this is an investment i'm yeah. gonna do but if i didn't find him on tiktok then go to his instagram and see he was local i would have never booked mm -hmm. that appointment right. so how do you guys utilize social media did you have to like learn was that a learning curve for you yeah social media is everything mm -hmm. to me um i think i think the stat is like uh 
60% of Gen Z uses TikTok as a social a search net a search engine over Google. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think I think it's extremely important. Um, I think we're in a, a, a an age an area where you can reach millions of people for free. Well, you need a phone and you need the internet. But like yeah. beyond that, you know, like people used to like go door to door and like drop off like their business cards. You know, I used to do that, you know, when I was like in college and just starting out. Um, and I feel like the investment that you put in to kind of like learn social media and how it works, um, the return on investment is like tenfold. So I, I really think it's worth um, learning and um, trying to fit into your life into a certain capacity. I'm literally filming for social media right now. <laughs> um, I think I think it's really important. Um, your people will find you. There's million, you know, like there's so many people in this world and social media makes it so much smaller um, and so much more accessible. Um, and I think it's really, really important. Jenny, forgive me in the sake of time. I'm, I'm okay. scared the lady in the no, purple suit. Lindsay's gonna come <laughs> tell me, hurry up. Uh, one more question. I want to procure, Jenny, I want to procure Nye. Where do we go? Website, social. Yes, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I use my Instagram for work. There so we go. You guys can find me on Instagram. It's uh, Jenny Rodriguez Style. It's very simple. Jenny <laughs> Rodriguez Stylist? Style. 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 Style, yeah. Okay. And I am LA Beautyologist on everything. So L A B E A U T Y L O G I S D um, on every single social media platform that exists. Well, there you have it. I want to say thank you to both Jenny and I. I am going to have a pre play and after playing routine for my next trip. Right. Um, I appreciate you all being here. I was told to say make sure you grab a snack. There are hydration and snack outside and then we're moving to our next workshop thanks for being here